Okay, here we are. Deb's studio tour that I promised you. As I told you, I, my studio is in a walkout basement. I'm very lucky to have two windows and this glass French door we put in. There was a solid door there before and it swung the other way and we decided, nope, let's go with a glass French door. All right, you can see I have a big dry erase space. And let's start with my sewing area. I'm very lucky to have a U-shaped space here. I'll tell you what it consists of, because I talked to you about doing it on a budget. This is a desk. It's a 1940s or 50s child's desk. Mark made a very large plywood top for it and covered it with a sheet of laminate. You'll see a lot about the laminate, and I'll explain that in a bit. This desk was a teacher's desk that I bought off of Craigslist. And it was a monster of a desk. The top was so large that we had to cut a piece off along the back. But it has nice deep drawers, and it's rock solid so that my sewing machine doesn't bounce. Mark took and drilled the corners and then took a jigsaw and cut out the space for the sewing machine to drop in. And that is such a joy because I hate when you have to sit them on top of a table and then stuff get rolls underneath the table that comes with it. So I have radio. I usually listen to audio books while I'm quilting. And this is where I do my sewing. The monitor back in, in here is hooked up to the camera when I make my videos so I can see if I'm staying in frame. So here's a corner cabinet that I got from Building Salvage. And thread racks I bought at garage sales. The curtains and things I made myself and even covered the clock with some sewing fabric. So you can take an inexpensive little clock and turn it into something fun. I made a deeper built-in windowsill so I could store some of my cute little things I've collected. Little things I've collected along the way. And this was a, it's a cork board that I covered in fabric to kind of match the room. My lamp I made a cover for out of the fabric, painted the stem of it white. This is my ironing station and I love it dearly. It was put on a dresser that we bought off Craigslist. And if you notice, nothing matches. But if you paint it a unifying color, no one notices. So Mark made the top for this ironing station. And it's about 22 inches deep by about 65 inches long. And I love it. And it's a piece of thick plywood. I covered it with cotton batting and then the Teflon um, fabric. And about once a year, we take it off and I refresh the cover. So that's very handy. And underneath here, you might notice I put a plug strip that I can plug in and out the iron very easily. Now this, let me step back a little. This is a cutting table and it's on wheels. Mark made this for me. And it has this base uh, frame and then it has two cabinets also bought from Building Salvage. And then a top and the top, it's made very uniquely. It, um, it has, if you were to pull it away from the wall, it has a flap that can fold up and give you another foot. So all together it can be four feet wide by seven feet long. So that's my rolling cutting table. And I took a little pretend mantle, painted it to match. Most of my stuff I've found here and there along the way. 
I took and made a little curtain to cover the storage area between the cabinets in this cutting table because I thought the fabric just reminded me of how people used to make little sink skirts back in the day. So I thought that would be a cute way, and it's on a little tension rod. I thought it would be a cute way to cover that space. There is my sunflower quilt and a few little bits and decorative things that I enjoy. Paint rack, because I do paint. Look at this beautiful chair. My daughter, I have very creative daughters, and my daughter on the Eastern Shore found this at an auction. No one wanted it. I believe she got it for free, and then she painted it with a milk paint and covered the seat, and I said, oh, it would be pretty beautiful in this room. So I got it. It was one of my Christmas presents. Thank you, Katie. Then here, I took two damaged canvases and covered them with more matching fabric that matches the room. The letters on the wall came from the dollar store. Then a cute little light strip I got on sale on special clearance from Walmart. Over here, I used to have a television up here. And uh, now I use it for more storage. Yet another cabinet. A space. More cabinets. None of them really match. More cabinets. This came out of one of my houses that I redid the kitchen. These came from Building Salvage. And you just add a little board in between. Remember I told you I put in under cabinet lighting? There it is. We had to staple it. The, the sticky stuff didn't hold good enough. So Mark stapled it up there for me. But that was $12. And look at the nice way it gives light to the space. Then these two tables bought. This one bought off Craigslist. Was a child's table from church or school. It was a little short so we put wheels on it and now it's a great height. And here is another table. And these are for students. I give private lessons or when friends come to sew. And you can tell by the base that this was a sewing machine cabinet. And once I didn't need the machine anymore we put a piece of plywood on the top. And remember I told you about the white laminate? We used it on the cutting table and the desk over here and now this. We found it at Lowe's. It was a 4x8 sheet of white laminate marked down to $5 because it had a chip in it. Talk about a good purchase. Now I've got my little red wagon. I'd be lost without my little red wagon. And an electric plug-in spool that I take to retreats with me and all kinds of little things. My coat rack area. A little row by row quilt that I made and embellished because I wanted it to show my favorite things. And back to the door. Alright, now I'm going to slowly turn to show you my haul, which you couldn't see last week because it was too messy. I finally cleaned it. It had been six months since I'd cleaned it. So, like I told you, I do some painting and crafting. And then, these are a shelf system that I've had for about 20 years. And they probably won't travel with me again. They were quite a job to take from house to house. But I can fit a lot of books and glues and crayons for the grandkids and oh, Mod Podge and sprays and containers of supplies and all of my fabric dyes and then over here, ribbons, lace, scraps and bits and bobs. This is what I have.
This countertop came from Building Salvage, and it had a crack in it. So we got that super cheap. And then Mark took two by twos and built support for it. So you see the two by two there? And it holds it, it's put onto the wall. And we love this counter. As long as we don't use it as a junk catch-all, it is wonderful. All right, under this counter, I have lots and lots of landscape fabric. In fact, some bags sitting up here that I've gone through recently. But these are my landscape fabrics. Then I have all sorts of... These are my smaller piece fabric storage. Segregated by colors. And the nice thing is, I can roll them out to where I need them. And then roll them back. And here is some more. And these are actually some projects, some UFOs in this one. I mentioned I was a painter. Well, it's been a while since I painted. I'll eventually get back to it. All right. So this is this hall space. It's a very nice hall space. And Mark put some great lighting in it. In this hall space... I have a huge closet that the former owners built in this house, which has come in quite handy. This is where I keep the bulk of my yardage. Okay, down bottom I have a lot of bolts of backing fabric and a weaving loom that one day I'm going to play around with. I have some wools. Here are fabrics that were bought as a unit waiting for a project. And then my fabrics sorted by colors. Here, that's, they, that's some more backing. Backing, backing. Then I've got some Christmas fabrics and then I start with my colors. All right, up here, I did a quilt for a man some years ago, and his grandmother owned these linens, and she was in her 90s, and this had to have been about 12 years ago, so I have these antique linens that maybe I'll have to do a giveaway, but they're precious. Someone has taken the time to do some hand crocheted lace. So, I'll be pulling those down that we can look at at some point. But those, that, there's my stash. Now, while we're switching closet doors, I would show you what I did with these. I didn't have a space for a design wall. So what I did is took flannel and took liquid starch and a roller. And I rolled liquid starch on the closet doors and then spread my flannel and flattened it out with a wallpaper brush. So that way I can have some space to hang blocks and quilts in progress. In this closet, I have my UFOs. And trust me, I have this many more again. So I am quite the UFO qu queen. And UFOs just means unfinished objects. Here are some I love, love, love all kinds of totes and sacks to carry things in. And then here are some of my quilts. And I keep them hung in here waiting for trunk shows. Whatever I don't have displayed, I try to keep here. And I have some extra machines down here. Extra totes. Things. Some bolts of fabric. So that's my storage. And all in all, I managed to do right well. So, I think this is going to bring me back to my main room. It's probably about 11 by 17 or 12, by, probably 12 by 17. And I'm very, very, very lucky to have this space. In fact, I should know what it measured because last fall I decided to renovate it. And so I repainted the space, and then we replaced the carpet with a light gray laminate. And I love it. I love it. I do have to wear slippers because it stays a little chilly. 
but it's so easy to clean up it's so easy to roll all my totes around on and um, I can just run a dust mop shake a couple rugs and I'm ready to sew again so I just want to thank you so much for coming to see my studio and I still have one more sewing room to show you that I will be sharing with you soon that's my frame room but thank you for joining me here and until we see each other again let's quilt for our time to quilt. Bye!